More than a week has passed since the shooting at a high school in Santa Fe, Texas. Ten people were killed. Last week, state and U.S. leaders came together at Governor Abbott's call to discuss how to make schools safer. And Texas Senator Ted Cruz was there, and he joins us now. Thank you so much for being here, Senator Cruz. Well, thanks for having me. Great to join you. You were at the roundtable today. You, uh, you heard from a lot of people, roundtable earlier last week. Talk to me about what that was like and what needs to be done. Well, the, the round table, it was very, very positive. It was four to five hours, it, and, it, and it was a number of the survivors of Santa Fe. It was students, it was parents, it was teachers. Uh, and, and then we also had there, we had survivors from Sutherland Springs, uh, survivors from the Alpine school shooting as well. And, and it was a conversation, you know, with a number of state leaders, but most of what we did was listen, uh, which I thought was really positive. You, know, you don't get enough of that in the political world. Listen to the experiences of those who went through these horrific events, but also listen to, to their thoughts, their ideas on what needs to be done to prevent them, because all of us want to see these stopped. We don't want to see another horrific murder like the, the ones we've seen recently. Specifically, what do you think needs to be done, and yeah. does there need to be changes in gun laws? Uh, I think there's a lot we need to be done. You know, it, it's striking, though, listen, listening to the students. Um, Santa Fe occurred a week ago on Friday. And, and Santa Fe is just about 30 miles outside of Houston, my hometown. I, I was at home when the shooting happened. And so I just drove down there and spent the entire day down there. And was with teachers, was with students, was with law enforcement. And when I was in the hospital visiting a student who'd been shot, there were about a dozen students uh, in the hospital room. Um, I asked, Governor Abbott asked, said, what should we do? Well, what, what should the answer be to, to make sure this, this never happens again? And it was striking what the students said. The students, two or one of them, each of them in that room said, gun control's not the answer. They said, listen, taking away my guns is not going to make me safer. It's just going to mean the killers and the murderers have guns. So we said, all right, well, what, what do you do then? The number one answer they gave both in Santa Fe on Friday when I was there and then also at the round table with the governor was more armed police officers in the schools, having law enforcement there to protect them. In Santa Fe, the law enforcement officers there bravely charged into harm's way. One was shot in the chest with a shotgun, and their bravery saved lives. That was the number one proposal that came out of each of these roundtables. Secondly, uh, hardening school safety, hardening the infrastructure, things like metal detectors at the door so that you know if someone's carrying in a weapon, things like reducing the number of entrances. You know, you think about it, you go to a courthouse, you go to a lot of businesses, you go here to NBC, you go through one entrance, uh, one entrance that's secure and that has armed security there. Well, schools ought to have the same thing. We, we also talked about in the round table uh, making doors so you can't kick them through so that they're solid and hard and they can be dead bolted from the inside so if god forbid another event happens that teachers can lock the door and keep the kids safe and secure and then also quite a few of the santa fe students they brought up arming teachers and and, and you know i remember in the hospital room one student said he was in the classroom next to the art class where the, where the shooter was was committing murder and he said his teacher was was a former marine and he said he, he wished his teacher had been armed because as a former Marine, he could have done something and maybe stopped the shooter before he murdered so many people. And then the other big thing that people emphasized, both students and parents and teachers, was early detection and prevention. That includes mental health resources. That includes spotting the problems. You know, you look at Parkland, where dozens of times law enforcement was called and, and the red flags, they didn't stop it before, beforehand. Likewise, stopping felons and fugitives from getting firearms. That's something I've really led the fight to do in the Senate. Uh, making sure that if a felon or fugitive tries to illegally buy a firearm, they're prosecuted and they're put in jail. All right, Senator, a couple of questions on, on Texas and trade. Are you worried that President Trump will make good on his threat and leave the North American Free Trade Agreement? And what does the uncertainty mean? Yeah for Texas. Yeah, I, I am worried that the most consistent concern that I hear from Texas business leaders all across the state and also from farmers, from ranchers throughout the state uh, is trade and, and what the administration is going to do on trade. Uh, you know, my view on NAFTA, NAFTA renegotiation, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It, it'd be a good thing if we modernize the agreement, if we expand our access to the Mexican markets, the Canadian markets, if we increase trade, that would be good for Texas. On the other hand, if it's used instead to erect barriers to the U.S. market to decrease trade, 
That'll hurt Texas farmers, hurt Texas ranchers, hurt Texas businesses. And the truth of the matter is there are voices on both sides of that debate within the Trump administration. There's an active debate. I can tell you, Gromer, I have leaned in repeatedly with President Trump directly, with the cabinet members involved in this, saying we need to be expanding trade, opening up. And I think the best opportunity for NAFTA is energy, opening up the Mexican energy markets. There are vast energy reserves in Mexico. If we do that, we can produce thousands of good-paying jobs in Mexico, and naturally the place they'll turn for expertise is Texas. Yes or no, uh, placing tariffs on imported automobiles, good idea, bad idea? Bad idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Real quickly, before we go to break here, you had a very difficult time in the campaign with President Trump, but yet you seem to be getting along just fine now. Have you put everything behind you and why? Well, listen, it was, it was a vigorous campaign. It was hard fought, uh, but it's over. And, and, and elections are about choices. He won, I lost. And, and, you know, the week after the election, I flew to New York. I, I went to Trump Tower and I met with the president. I said, Mr. President, we got an historic opportunity. We can't waste it. I want to do everything humanly possible to lead the fight in the Senate to deliver on our promises.